are watching Faith World TV. Faith World TV, changing the world with the Word of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord and God bless you. Uh, thank you for joining me in the study of the Word of God. Um, and if you're joining for the first time, welcome to our Heroes Hall of Fame series, part 98. This is a story taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. And we are currently at verse 32. We've looked at three great men of faith mentioned there. That was um, Barak, Gideon, and now we're looking at Samson. And, you know, we've been blessed through the life of faith of Samson. Uh, but again, as the Bible says in Romans 15, 4, that whatever is written, is written for us to learn. And also, First Corinthians ten six that um, scriptures are written for uh, our example, you know, so that we can learn from their mistakes. So I believe God's message for us today, through the life of Samson, through the testimony of Samson, that we need to be careful of the choices that we make. And that's the title of today's message: that the choices we make can affect our destiny. So. Um, if you've got a recorder, express record, so you can always watch it again, uh, or you can always um, catch it again on our YouTube channel. So um, I pray that as we um, expose ourselves to the Word of God, as we humble ourselves to receive the Word of God, our eyes of understanding, we've been enlightened in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, the Word of God is living and powerful. So I pray that His Word, you know, will cause transformation in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says His Word is also healing to our flesh. And I pray that whatever you might be afflicting your body right now, in the mighty name of you believe that the Word of God begin to bring relief in Jesus' name. Because the Bible says they came to hear Him and to be healed of their disease. And I'm praying for you as you're listening to me that God begin a walk in your mind and in your body in the mighty name of Jesus. That those pain, those aches, those heartaches, that God will bring peace because He's the Lord that heals the brokenhearted. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. So, let's go to the Word. So, our biblical reference would be... Um, Judges chapter 13, we, we kind of swing from, from Judges 13 to 16 because that's where we find the whole story of Samson. And Samson, as we learned, had a good beginning. His birth was miraculous. His birth was announced by an angel. He had godly parents. So um, so he had a good beginning. He was a warm man army. He killed a lion with his bare hands. He killed a thousand Philistines with a jawbone of a donkey. But where does Samson's strength come from? We know as a child in Judges 13, 7, you know, the, the, the Lord told the mom that he was going to be a Nazarite. And you find, about, find out about a Nazarite vow in Numbers 6, 45, where he says, his hair must be uncut and, uh, he, and uh, he must not drink wine or alcohol, nor touch anything that is dead. So, but we do understand that his strength uh, does not come from his long hair uh, because then all the Jews will have had long hair, all the men, and they will have in power to defeat the Philistines. But his strength came from the, from the Holy Spirit coming upon him mightily and also his commitment uh, to God, which symbolizes his uncut hair and his abstinence from alcohol and um, wine. Now, the first lesson I think we need to learn here is that the Bible never says Samson was muscular, uh, you know, or, or well-built like we see in movies um, today. But whenever I did something spectacular, it was because the Holy Spirit came mightily upon him and he was able to do great things. So, uh, so the lesson is we must never form our theology or the understanding of God based on Christian movies that we watch. You know, uh, for example, the, uh, the latest movie of Noah, which starred um, Russell Crowe, you know, most of the scenes there was, were not um, based on scripture. So there are some Christian movies that we watch that have no biblical reference or they mix truth, you know, with people's ideas, you know, what they think um, um, God is about or heaven or hell is about. So we need to be careful that everything we watch or whatever book we read that is in line with the word of God. 
Another lesson we need to learn about Samson is that, you know, God wants to use us. Just as God used Samson, you know, um, uh, as a Nazarite. And, you know, for us, to the New Testament saint, you know, the vows of a, of the, of a Nazarite represents purity, humility, um, a life separated from this ungodly world, a life that is devoted to God. So God wants to use every believer. God wants to use you like he did Samson. So, on, uh, um, so God says in Romans 12, 1 to, he says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present yourself, a, a, your body is a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, or in some versions, the act of worship. So God is speaking to us that in respect of what he's done, in lieu of what he's done for us, you know, God's goodness, his mercy, his great sacrifice, that we should show our gratitude by presenting our bodies as living sacrifice to God, you know. And how do we do that? We do that by not conforming. Romans 12, 2, he said, do not be conformed to this world. That is, we are not to copy the behavior and customs of this world, but rather be transformed by the renewing of our mind, you know, uh, to the word of God. That is, whenever we hear the word of God, whenever we sit in church, the word of God should be changing our thinking. So we, we, we begin to, to, to act like Jesus Christ, speak like Jesus Christ. For example, the world today wants to conform us to accept certain ungodly lifestyles, LGBT lifestyles, uh, or the, the uh, new invented different types of gender, transgender, gender neutral, non-binary, agenda, pangender, you know, cisgender, you know, fourth gender, third gender, whatever they're. But this is against the truth of the Word of God. We need to declare the truth uh, of what the Bible says uh, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 21, which, which defeats the, um, the, disciples, the disciples of evolution, that God created the earth in the beginning. In Genesis 1.27 says, Genesis 1.27 says, so God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. So there are only two genders, male and female. And also the world wants us to despise marriage. You know, social media entertainment, and many, uh, you know, and many in our culture despise marriage. Despise marriage. You know, today most of the ninety percent of what we watch on TV, uh, you find couples who meet and then straight away they go to bed together without honoring marriage. But this is against the truth of God. This is against, you know, um, the, the creator who we are all going to give account to, you know, because he's the one with the highest authority. He's the one who decides uh, morality. He's the one who decides right and wrong. And the Bible says one day we're all going to stand before God. In Hebrews 13, for it says in the New International Version, it says marriage should be honored by all. Because you get some people, you know, get it's like get get um, uh, going out together. And when um, one party mentions marriage, other person you know, strings them. No, no, because they don't want to be responsible. But the Bible says, God says, marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. The Bible says, God will judge the adulterer, the one who has extramarital affairs, and the one who has premarital affair that is having sexual relationship. Uh, before marriage, you will stand before God. Not, not, not make no mistake about the Hebrew starting for. So, if you're a Christian, if you're a believer, you know, you, you're, you're already going out with someone, you're sleeping together, being married, you need to repent because God will judge you. So, God is saying to you today in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 17 to 18, He said, Therefore, come out from among them, be separate from this kind of world that wants to conform us. Touch no unclean thing, and I'll receive you. That's how we prove ourselves or show our gratitude to God that is separating from the world and devoted to God because, you know, God is holy. And it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 20-21, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, useful for the master, prepared for every good work. God wants us, God wants us to be useful. God wants you to be useful. A vessel that is holy, set apart, for every good work. So again, 2 Corinthians 7, 
verse 1 says, since we have these promises, what kind of promise that is? You see, when we say we believe in God, we give our life to God, God says, I have your back, I'll be your protector, I'll be your provider, I'll fight for you, I'll be your guide, I'll be your deliverer, I'll be your refuge, you know, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So I know these promises, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates the body, sensual sins, sexual sins, or contaminates our spirit. Envy, pride, jealousy, bitterness, unforgiving spirit, hatred, you know, let us perfect holiness in the fear of God. So that's the first lesson. So the next lesson is God empowers and protects those who walk in obedience to his will. We see that in Samson. Samson, in the, in the beginning of his ministry, walked in obedience to God's will. And there was a case in Judges 14 when he was suddenly attacked. Uh, we see this scenario in Judges 14, verse 5 to 6. The Bible says, Samson and his parents were going down to Timnah. A young lion suddenly attacked Samson now the vineyards of Timnah. And at that moment, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him, and he ripped the lion's jaws apart with his bare hands. He did it as if easily as if it were a young goat. Okay, so you can see that whenever um, Samson does something spectacular, it's because the Holy Spirit comes mightily upon him. The Bible says the enemy comes suddenly to attack him. So as long as Samson was working in purity and obedience to the will of God, God had his back. God empowered him to defeat the enemy. And that applies to us as well. That when we walk in purity, when we devote ourselves to God, when we walk in, in humility and obedience to God, when the enemy comes suddenly, you know, or sets an ambush, you know, God fights for us. And that's why the Bible says in Isaiah 59 verse 19, you know, it said a lot about that in New King James Version, the spirit of the Lord, when the enemy, sorry, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And again, Deuteronomy 28 verse 7, it says, The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. For they shall come out against you in one way and flee before his seven ways. That tells us that the enemy will attack. That's the job of the enemy. That's the job of the devil is to attack, frustrate. So do not be ignorant of that fact that he will rise up. But once you are devoted to God, living a life of purity, God has your back. The Bible says he will cause your enemies to be defeated before your face and God will not listen to the causes of wicked people against you. Proverbs 26 2 says, Like a fluttering sparrow or a dashing swallow, and on the sad course will not land on its intended victim. Deuteronomy 23 4 to 5. This is an example of when a false prophet called Balaam. You know, behind the scenes, in secret, you know, um, was, was sought to curse God's people. He was hired by a king called Balak. And um, so they planned to curse God's people. But the Bible says in, in Deuteronomy chapter 23, um, verse 5, But the Lord your God refused to listen to Balaam, this false prophet, this witch doctor. This, uh, it turned the intended curse into a blessing. And that's what happens to us as believers. When the enemy in secret seeks to attack us, either physically or spiritually in our dreams or in our thought life, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against it. God would not listen. God will rebuke the enemy on our behalf without our knowledge. You know, God will fight for us. But uh, and, and again, let's look at quickly at Deuteronomy 28. You know, because the blessings of God comes with condition. In Deuteronomy 20, verse 1, it said, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his commandments that I'm giving you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the world. So if you walk in obedience to his will, the cause of evil intention of the enemy, you know, will not come upon us. But if we disobey, okay, the same chapter, 28, verse 15 says, But if you refuse to listen to the Lord, your God, and do not obey all his commands and decrees I'm giving you today. All these causes will come and overwhelm that. Is if you refuse to obey the word of God, we are listening to the world, listening to the flesh, listening to the devil. It's like we break the edge of protection because there's an edge of protection. And it's seen when we deliberately sin, we open the door for the enemy to afflict us. Unfortunately, Brother Samson started making choices. Contrary to God's, and that's the title of my message. That the wrong choices we make can affect our destiny. So Samson started making wrong choices. So Samson had the potential, 
you know. But when he started making wrong choices, that is, he fizzled out, you know, um, in his ministry. He died before he died. That wasn't God's plan for him, but that's what happened. And that's why God wants us to learn from this message. So what caused Samson's downfall? One, he neglected his fellowship with God. You know, it was evident that Samson was not reading the word, meditating on the word. He wasn't praying to God. You know, and how do we know that? Because in Judges 14, the Bible says, Samson looked at a woman, a Philistine woman, a pagan woman, caught his eye and told his friends, I want this woman. And God already commanded them in Deuteronomy chapter 7, uh, from verse 3, it says, You must not intermarry with them. Do not let your daughters and sons marry their sons and daughters, for they will lead your children away from it to worship other gods. But Samson, you know, blatantly, it went against God's command. So what's the lesson? No matter how strong we are, no matter how, who we are in the faith or our position in the faith, if we neglect prayer and daily Bible reading and study, we are on a downward path. We will give into temptation. You see, for any Christian to neglect daily prayer, reading the word, it's like, you know, reading the word is like eating food, um, prayers like drinking water. So you can imagine what will happen to you if you don't drink water or eat food every day. You'll be, you'll be weak, you know, you'll be vulnerable to sickness and diseases. But even if you pray a lot and do not read the Bible again, and know that's the problem with many Christians. We, they're so lazy. We are so lazy, you know, uh, to make time to read the Word of God. We, we prefer to read um, um, uh, daily um, reading or um, um, short Bible verses, you know, um, you know, um, you know, which I call spiritual snacks, but not really eating proper food, going to the Word of God to eat the Word of God. So you can pray and pray and pray, but if you don't read the Word, you will fall. You will fall, you give into temptation. Or even if you read the Word and you don't pray, the same thing happens. That's why, you know, um, the King David, um, uh, the prophet, the great psalmist of Israel, in Psalm 119, 9 to 11 says, um, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word, that is one, you need to read the word, meditate on the word, and two, pray, verse 10, with my whole heart I have sought you, oh let me not wander from your commandments. So it, it takes prayer and reading of the word. So your word have I eat in my heart, am I not sin against you? Let's take a biblical example of the, of the disciples when Jesus was on his way to Gethsemane, when he, when he, he told his disciples that um, he was going to be um, arrested by the Jewish uh, elders, the priests, you know, and the scribes, and he was going to be delivered to the Gentiles to be crucified. So, so he told them about this and also invited them, three of his main uh, disciples, Peter, John, and James, to pray with him, you know. So they had the word that um, Jesus was going to be arrested, you know, but they failed to pray. Matthew 26, 37 to 45, read the story that Jesus said, come pray with me. And um, instead of praying, they were sleeping. And then Jesus came out to them and said, keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. So, but they failed to pray, they slept. And what happened when the time of try came, they all fled, they all decided they couldn't stand, you know, with, with, with the Lord. So, so that's saying to us today, that as Christians, when you fail to pray re regularly or read your word, you will give in to temptation. The tempter will overcome you. So, he neglected his fellowship with God in prayer so the well, that's, that's the first reading of his downfall. The second was he neglected fellowship with other believers. Samson, as you observe in, in his story, a story in the book of Judges 13 to chapter 16, was a lone ranger, was a woman army. We, we read nothing of Samson having fellowship with other Christians in the spiritual level. And how do we know this? Because even in, in, at his wedding party, wedding engagement party, you know, he had no friends. Imagine you're throwing a wedding and you don't have, and, and, and there was no friends. In Judges 14, verse 10, he says, uh, his fa as his father-in-law uh, was making final arrangements for the marriage, Samson threw a party. And, the, and, and it was the custom of the young men in those days. When the bride's parents saw him, they selected 30 young men from the town to be his companions. That is, he didn't have any person with him. You can imagine. They had to select pagans, um, for the Philistines to come and be his friends, strangers to come to his party. So, what's the lesson? One of the ways to fall into sin or fall away from God is not to have fellowship with spiritual-minded people, with believers. 
or, or, or be accountable to anyone of that sort of faith. You see, today there are many Christian law rangers that, that, that there are those who believe that they don't have to go to church to be a believer. And they are just, they are just and also they are just, there are those who have just become lazy and complacent. And, and rather than, you know, uh, be in the house of the Lord, they, you know, uh, they, think it's, it, they think it's more important to be somewhere else. You think that there are more important things to do than be in the house of the Lord. And what does the Bible say in Psalm 84, 10 to 11? It says, a single day in the courts of God is better than a thousand places elsewhere. The Psalm says, I'd rather, you know, um, be a gatekeeper in the house of God than to throw an intent of wickedness. And it says, for the Lord is our son and shield. He will give grace and glory. The Lord will, will tell no good thing from those who do what is What is right? That is be in the house of the Lord. You see, be in the house of the Lord to serve God, to worship God. You see, God says it's not good for a person to be alone. That's where God created church. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, uh, verse 9, it said, Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other to succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. You see, Samson was alone. You know, and as a result, he was defeated alone. In Hebrews 12, Sorry, Hebrews chapter 3 from verse 12. Say, be careful then, brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil, unbelieving, turning away from the living God. You must warn each other every day. What is it today? So I don't know if you'll be deceived by sin and adding against God. A lot of Christians that are deceived by sin. You see, when you, think you, when you say, I don't need to be in church, or when you put other things as priority before God, you are deceived by sin. Samson was deceived by sin. He had no one to rebuke him, to encourage him, you know, to tell him, bro, you know, where are you? You know, you, we've not seen in church these days. And so, uh, and you know, there are some that say, well, pastor, you don't understand what I'm going through. You know, you don't know, uh, I've been offended in church. You know, um, I've been hurt. I don't like them. You know, they're all hypocrites. You know, the service is too long. The sermon is boring. You know, the, 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 the preacher is not pre Then pray that God will lead you to the right church. Because make no mistake about you two, you're not perfect. Okay, you're, you're not a saint. So uh, pray that God will lead you to the right church where you'll be taught the word of God, where you will grow and serve and be accountable. Okay, for God has commanded, commanded us in Hebrews 10, 25, not to neglect fellowship. Even Jesus went to church. He is perfect. We are not perfect, but he went to church. In Luke chapter 4, verse 16, we read, When he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on Sabbath and stood to read the scriptures. You know, as usual, the Bible says it's custom. He went to synagogue and even participated. It's not, and again, it's not, it's not just um, to go and show up in church, but to participate, to do something, to exercise the talent that God has given you. And don't be like that wicked Sam. The Bible, God, Jesus said that Sam was lazy and wicked because he buried the, his talent. He never used it for the glory of God. And even when Jesus' disciples decided him, you know, at that crucial time when he needed them, he still went to them and fellowship with them and strengthened them in John 20. When he could say, went to them, when they locked the door, afraid because of what happened to Jesus, Jesus went out into the army and said, Peace. You know, he strengthened them. He strengthened bitter. He said, if you love me, feed my sheep. Because Jesus knew the importance of fellowship and the benefits of fellowship. Because, you know, through fellowship, uh, many of us have been blessed. I've been blessed through fellowship because it's through fellowship. We encourage one another. We strengthen and, you know, doors are open. So many things happen, you know, when you're in the church of God. Because the church of God is a place of relief, rest, and refuge. And Satan also knows the importance of fellowship. And that's why he seeks to break off fellowship, uh, to break away from fellowship, to break off families. In order to isolate us and then... Uh, um, we become easy prey so it can destroy. But anyway, we continue this next week. So um, join us again next week. But as I close, if you are a believer, but you are living in sin, you are living in disobedience to God, you know, um, you are living that, you are committing that sin of omission. That is, you fail to read the word of God. You fail to pray or, or you are bunking church. The other things are more important to you. God is not forcing your life, you know, uh, in your life. You, you are living in sin. The Bible says God will honor those who honor him. You need to repent. Luke 6, 46 says, you know, why call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I say? Okay, so if, you're, if God is speaking to you, you need to repent uh, you know, today in Jesus' name. And if you are not a Christian, if you've not given your life to Christ, you know, you need to repent, you know, before the 
the door of grace shuts against you. If you die without Christ, you will go to hell. Okay, Christ is coming and it's coming soon. It could come tomorrow, it could come before the end, it may come in 10 years, it come in 20 years, it could come next week. Nobody knows, but when it comes without Christ, if you come without having Him in your life, you will perish. So, if God is speaking to you uh, and you want to give your life to Christ, this is the time you can pray this prayer with me, you know, uh, pray with all your heart. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross. I believe he rose again from the dead. I receive him into my life. I confess him as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for making me your child today. In Jesus' name. If you said that prayer, you mean it with all your heart. Welcome to the family of God. Now you need to, as I tell you, your radio. But I keep watching. If you're watching from YouTube, to share this um, video so that's going to be blessed. So I leave you with this blessing. May God bless you and protect you. May God cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yes, may God lift up his countenance upon you. May he give you his peace in the name of Jesus. Yes, peace in your heart. Peace in your relationship. Peace in your, even peace in your working place. In the mighty name of Jesus. So God bless you. Thank you for watching. See you next time, same place. Watching Faith World TV. Faith World TV, changing the world with the Word of God.